the trouble with it is trying to decide what to call these words, man, or trying to decide what to call this whole thing. You know, what are these words that I'm talking about? They're just words that we've decided, sort of decided, not to use all the time. That's about the only thing you can really say about them for sure. That they're just some words, not many either, just a few, that we've decided, well, we won't use them all the time. Sometimes, well, hell yeah. Sometimes it's okay, but not all the time. That's, and they're the only words that seem to have that restriction. I mean, there are a lot of words you can say whenever you want, you know. Pneumonia! Nobody gives you a lot of... All right, you can't yell it in the hospital a great deal, but what the hell. There are words that you can say, no problem. Topography! No one has ever gone to jail for screaming topography. But there are some words that you can go to jail for. There are some words that we just have decided we will not say all the time. Sometimes, okay, if you're running through the jungle chasing somebody that we're at war with, you can holler them. If you're shooting a criminal, it's okay, it's the all-American thing. Dirty fucking crook. <laughs> but if you're with the bishop's wife at lunch, it's better not to ask for the goddamn lettuce. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just like we've decided there'll be some words we won't say all the time. And I was just trying to find out which words they were. For sure. All of them. I wanted a list. Because nobody gives you a list. That's the problem. They don't give you a list. Wouldn't you think it'd be normal if they didn't want you to say something to tell you what it is? Nobody even tells you when you're a kid what the words are that you're supposed to avoid. You have to say them to find out which ones they are. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> ah! Oh, fuck! That's two. Oh, Ma, that's enough trial and error, huh? Please, Ma, give me a list, huh? All right, you're six years old now, and here's the list of words your dad and I don't ever want to hear you say. Oh, hey, thanks, Ma. Boy, that's going to save me an ass kicking or two. <laughs> ah! Yeah, you never know what's going to be on the list. Because it's always somebody else's list. You didn't make that up. Somebody told you that shit. They told you, better, better not say that. So you got to... And you don't know what's going to be on their list. God, people's lists even change from day to day. Some people on Friday night got a list, you know, not about two or three words. Sunday morning, goddamn, they make 27 words. On These are the same people two days later. Different list. So you got to kind of watch out what you're going to believe from them. The trouble is, I was trying to find out what these words might be, and I wanted to know the ones that you could never say on television. I mean the filthy words that are always filthy. There are a lot of these little two-way, double entendre words that have two meanings, words that are okay part of the time. I call them like part-time filth. Some of these words, they're only 50% dirty. You have words like ass. Ass is hardly even a dirty word anymore, but it has a few meanings that you can't say on television. That's what I was talking about. What can you say on television? That's another one of those places where we can't use these words all the time. But some of them are all right some of the time. Ass is all right on television. You can say on television things like, well, you've made a perfect ass of yourself tonight. But you can't say, hey, let's go get some ass. <laughs> Bitch. Bitch is another word like that. Same kind of word. It's the only dirty part of the time. Depends on what you mean by bitch. You might be the lady from the San Diego Zoo visiting one of the Tonight Shows, and you might just have a bunch of little canines with you there. One of them is a female. You say, there's the bitch, Johnny, and it's okay, fine. Just don't refer to the singer the same way. That's all. <laughs> is that bitch going to do another number? Yes. <laughs> Animals are fine on those two-way words. And that's it. That's what I was trying to find. The words that were always dirty, not just part of the time but completely filth. Well, in, in looking for these words, I kept finding new categories. We have so many ways of describing these dirty words. It's, well, we have more ways to describe dirty words than we actually have dirty words. That seems a little strange to me. It seems to indicate that somebody was awfully interested in these words. They kept referring to them. They called them bad words, dirty. Filthy, foul, vile, vulgar, coarse, in poor taste, unseemly, street talk, gutter talk, locker room language, <laughs> barracks talk, bawdy, naughty, saucy, raunchy, 
Rude, crude, lewd, lascivious, indecent, profane, obscene, blue, off-color, <laughs> risque, suggestive, <laughs> cursing, cussing, swearing, and all I could think of was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. <laughs> Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. That was my original list. I knew it wasn't complete, but it was a starter set, you know? Shit, piss, fuck, yes, WBAI is the one who played them. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Now, that was the original list. We've added a few words since then. We've added fart, turd, and twat. <laughs> And I know there are some other words that many of you are wondering about, why they haven't been considered, why they haven't shown up on the list thus far. We're looking at them all very closely. Some of your favorites might make the list this year. <laughs> Asshole, ball bag, hard on, piss hard, blue balls, taint, nookie, snatch box, pussy, pecker, pecker head, pecker tracks, jism, joint, donnaker, dork, poontang. <laughs> Cornhole and dingleberry. <laughs> dingleberry, a very popular word. And to my way of thinking, dingleberry, a rather innocent sounding word. Dingleberry sounds Christmassy to me, you know. <laughs> Let's put one on the tree, Dad. <laughs> I would have been out here a little bit sooner, but they gave me uh, the wrong dressing room and I couldn't find any place to put my stuff. And I don't know how you are, but I need a place to put my stuff, so. That's what I've been doing back there, just trying to find a place for my stuff. You know how important that is. That's the, whole, that's the whole meaning of life, isn't it? Trying to find a place for your stuff. That's all your house is. Your house is just a place for your stuff. If you didn't have so much goddamn stuff, you wouldn't need a house. You could just walk around all the time. That's all your house is. It's a pile of stuff with a cover on it. You see that when you take off in an airplane and you look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. Everybody's got their own pile of stuff. And when you leave your stuff, you gotta lock it up. Wouldn't want somebody to come by and take some of your stuff. They always take the good stuff. They don't bother with that crap you're saving. Ain't nobody interested in your fourth grade arithmetic papers. They're looking for the good stuff. That's all your house is. It's a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. Now, Sometimes, sometimes you've got to move. You've got to get a bigger house. Why? Too much stuff. You've got to move all your stuff. And maybe put some of your stuff in storage. Now imagine that. There's a whole industry based on keeping an eye on your stuff. Enough about your stuff. Let's talk about other people's stuff. Did you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house, you never quite feel 100% at home? You know why? No room for your stuff. Somebody else's stuff is all over the place. And what awful stuff it is. Where did they get this stuff? And if you have to stay overnight at someone's house, you know, unexpectedly, and they give you a little room to sleep in that they don't use that often. Someone died in it 11 years ago. And they haven't moved any of his stuff. Or wherever they give you to sleep, usually right near the bed, there's a dresser and there's never any room on the dresser for your stuff. Someone else's shit is on the dresser. Have you noticed that their stuff is shit and your shit is stuff? <laughs> Get that off of there. Now, now, sometimes you go on vacation, you gotta bring some of your stuff with you. You can't bring all your stuff. Just the stuff you really like. The stuff that fits you well that month. Let's say you're gonna go to Honolulu. You're gonna go all the way to Honolulu. You gotta take two big bags of stuff. Plus your carry-on stuff, plus the stuff in your pockets. You get all the way to Honolulu and you get in your hotel room and you start to put away your stuff. That's the first thing you do in a hotel room is put away your stuff. I'll put some stuff in here, put some stuff down there. Here's another place for some stuff here. I'll put some stuff over there. You put your stuff over there. I'm putting my stuff over here. Here's another place for some stuff. Hey, we got more places than we've got stuff. We're going to have to buy more stuff. Yeah. And 
and you put all your stuff away and you know that you're thousands of miles from home and you don't quite feel at ease but you know that you must be okay because you do have some of your stuff with you and you relax in Honolulu on that basis that's when your friend from Maui calls and says hey why don't you come over to Maui for the weekend spend a couple of nights over here oh shit no now what stuff do you bring right you've got to bring an even smaller version of your stuff just enough stuff for a weekend on Maui and you get over and you're really spread out now you've got shit all over the world you've got stuff at home stuff in storage stuff in Honolulu stuff in Maui stuff in your pockets supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain but you get over to your friend's house in Maui and they give you a little place to sleep and there's a little window ledge or some kind of a small shelf and there's not much room on it but it's okay because you don't have much stuff now and you put what stuff you do have up there you put your imported French toenail clippers your odor eaters with the 45 day guarantee your cinnamon flavored dental floss and your Afrin 12 hour decongestant nasal spray and even though you're a long way from home, you know that you must be okay because you do have your Afrin 12-hour decongestant nasal spray. And you relax in Maui on that basis. That's when your friend says, Hey, I think tonight we'll go over the other side of the island and stay at my friend's house overnight. Oh, shit, no! No! What do you bring? Now you just bring the things you know you're gonna need. Money, keys, comb, wallet, lighter, hanky, pen, cigarettes, contraceptives, Vaseline, whips, chains, whistles, dildos, and a book. Here's some just plain old words that are sort of fun to uh, think of or look at more closely than usual. Things like hot water heater. Have you ever have you thought of hot water heaters? Pardon me? I said I'd like to buy a hot water heater. What the hell for? <laughs> Hot water doesn't need to be heated. <laughs> you must want a cold water heater. <laughs> How about a hot water cooler? <laughs> yeah, some words are fun. Words like f flammable. Flammable? Inflammable and non inflammable. <laughs> Why are there three? <laughs> Does it seem to you as though two words ought to be able to handle that idea? <laughs> I mean, either the thing flams or it doesn't flam. <laughs> now, flammable, flammable, that's the one that's on the side of the truck. Flammable. As if you're going to get out of your car at 60 miles an hour and smoke on his truck, right? <laughs> Flammable. I found out the reason it says that on the truck is so that just in case you should be spinning out of control at 70 or 80, heading for the truck, you'll know what it was that happened, you know? I'd like to talk a little bit about baseball and football. Starting with baseball, baseball is different from any other sport in a lot of different little ways. For instance, in most sports, you score points or you score goals. In baseball, you score runs. In most sports, the ball or the object is put in play by the offensive team. In baseball, the defense puts the ball in play, and only the defensive team is allowed to touch the ball. In fact, in baseball, if an offensive player touches the ball intentionally, he's out. Also, most sports, the team is run by a coach. In baseball, the team is run by a manager. And only in baseball does the manager or the coach have to wear the same uniform the players do. Can you picture Bill Parcells in his New York Giants uniform? <laughs> now, baseball and football are different from one another in other kind of interesting ways, I think. First of all, um, Baseball is a 19th century pastoral game. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. 
Baseball is played on a diamond in a park, the baseball park. Football is played on a gridiron in a stadium, sometimes called Soldier Field or War Memorial Stadium. Baseball begins in the spring, the season of new life. Football begins in the fall when everything is dying. In football, you wear a helmet. In baseball, you wear a cap. Football is concerned with downs. What down is it? Baseball is concerned with ups. Who's up? Are you up? I'm not up. He's up. In football, the specialist comes in to kick. In baseball, the specialist comes in to relieve someone. In football, you receive a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. Whoops! Football has hitting, clipping, spearing, blocking, piling on, late hitting, unnecessary roughness, and personal fouls. Baseball has the sacrifice. <laughs> Football is played in any kind of weather. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, mud. Can't read the numbers on the field, can't read the yard markers, can't read the players' numbers. The struggle will continue. In baseball, if it rains, we don't come out to play. <laughs> I can't come out to play! It's raining out! <laughs> Baseball has a seventh inning stretch. Football has the two minute warning. <laughs> Baseball has no time limit. We don't know when it's going to end. We might have extra innings. Football is rigidly timed and it will end even if we have to go to sudden death. In baseball, during the game in the stands, there's kind of a picnic feeling. Emotions may run high or low, but there's not that much unpleasantness. In football, in the stands, during the game, you can be sure that at least 27 times you are perfectly capable of taking the life of a fellow human being. <laughs> Preferably a stranger. And finally, the objectives of the two games are totally different. In football, the object is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to be on target with his aerial assault, riddling the defense by hitting his receivers with deadly accuracy, in spite of the blitz, even if he has to use the shotgun. With short bullet passes and long bombs, he marches his troops into enemy territory, balancing this aerial assault with a sustained ground attack which punches holes in the forward wall of the enemy's defensive line. In baseball, the object is to go home <laughs> and to be safe. I hope I'll be safe at home. Safe at home. Hey, baby, what's happening? Que pasa? Que what you call your pasa? Al Sleet here, you hippy dippy weather man, with all the hippy dippy weather, man. Brought to you by Parsons Pest Control. Do you have termites, water bugs, and roaches? Well, Parsons will help you get rid of the termites and water bugs and help you smoke the roaches. <laughs> Temperature at the airport is 88 degrees, which is stupid, man, because I don't know anybody who lives at the airport. <laughs> Now, if you'll take a look at our national weather map, you'll see that we don't have one. <laughs> so try to picture last night's map in your mind. Remember all the letters and lines, all them little numbers. The weather is dominated by a large Canadian low, which is not to be confused with a Mexican high. <laughs> Tonight's forecast, dark. <laughs> Continued dark tonight, turning to partly light in the morning. Oh, Al, 
Well, Al got out of the weather business when he realized he had given the, the final weather forecast. He had given the ultimate forecast. There was nowhere to go. You know, when there's nothing left to conquer in your field, hey, it's time to leave. And old Al had given the ultimate forecast. He told us, he said one night, that the weather will continue to change on and off for a long, long time. <laughs> and he was gone for us. God bless Al. I love that dog. I've never seen him and I love him. He's going to be wonderful when I meet that dog. <laughs> lots of people got lots of goddamn doggies. And you don't even have to have one to learn about doggies. Your friend might have a dog. It could be your friend's dog. He makes you him. That makes him your dog friend. You go to visit your friend, his dog is in, you can pet him too. Hi, hello, how are you, Sneezy? You're wonderful. Hello, goddamn. And for that moment, he's your dog. So you can have someone else's dog for a while. Ha, ah, he, he likes, he likes me. I think, oh my God, look at this doggy here. Goddamn doggies. Lots of things to know about him too. Lots of things you learn. You don't know where always and you can't remember. For instance, can you remember the first time you found out that by scratching a dog here, you could make this leg go like that? <laughs> and that you could make it stop when you stop. God damn. I'm in complete control of this dog. Or that you can make their head tilt from across the room just by making a funny noise. You go, <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> Oh, look, honey, isn't he cute? Let's get his head fixed so he stays like that. Did you ever spell in front of your dog? Some of them are smart. You got a spell. Honey, do we have any more B-O-N-E-S? B-O-N-E-S. They know the sound of B alone. B-O-N-E-S. Take it easy, take it easy. And sooner or later, what's going to happen with the little dog? Sooner or later, lying on the bed, he's going to create an incident. He's going to make one of you humans turn to the other and say, Honey, did you fart? <laughs> Not me. I thought you farted. Not me. <sighs> That's not even one of my farts. <laughs> I've got four farts and that's not one of mine. I've got my Heineken's fart. I got my broccoli fart. My rice pudding fart and my non-dairy creamer fart. <laughs> and that's not one of my farts. I know. The dog farted. Tippy, why did you fart? Look at him. He knows he farted. I've seen his asshole open up. I see him. Well, I happen to be looking at his asshole by chance. What kind of a question is that? I thought he was doing them deep breathing exercises. <laughs> you see, dogs have nothing to do. There's no job description for a dog. They're forced to wait for something to happen that they can get in on. If you do something, they'll be glad to join you. <laughs> but they rarely initiate any activity on their own. They're just waiting. Waiting. Waiting and waiting and waiting. Waiting to come in, waiting to go out, waiting to eat, waiting to crap, waiting to wake up, waiting to sleep, waiting to go upstairs, waiting to go downstairs. Sometimes they're just waiting to wait. <laughs> you ever seen a dog just standing there? He don't know what he's waiting for. But if it happens, he'll be ready. <laughs> Just a waiting and a waiting. Waiting for you to come home. They don't understand time. Dog doesn't know the difference between an hour and a half or next week. He thinks you're going to be gone forever. That's the only time period dogs really understand. Forever. That's how long they think everything lasts. 
that's how long they think everything takes. Forever and ever. Do you ever scratch your dog behind the ears? Oh boy, they love that, huh? Oh boy, you're scratching your doggy behind the ears and he really loves that. And you're looking at him and everything. And when you finally stop, he looks at you like you're a criminal. <laughs> he thought it was going to go on and on and on. Same thing when you feed them. As soon as they get finished, they say, where the fuck's the food? <laughs> they thought it was the loaves and the fishes. It was going to last forever and ever. Dog don't know. They must think we're going to be gone forever, otherwise why would they act the way they do when we finally get home? Oh boy, 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 I thought you were never going to come home, I thought you were never going to come home, I thought you were never going to come home, I thought you were never going to come home, I didn't know what to do, you know what, I didn't know how to operate the can opener, how do you operate the can opener, I didn't know what to do, man, what do you push it down, I couldn't think of it, you know what, you know what I did, I took a can of dog food and I rolled it down the hill and hope a truck ran it over, that's what I could think of, man, I mean, They'll do that if you even just forgot your hat. You come back in eight seconds. Oh boy, oh boy, I thought you were never gonna come home. I, you I was gonna eat the bird. I couldn't find the bird. Where the fuck's the bird? And you leave the bird. Will you stop it? I was just here. Dog don't care. He'll do whatever's next. He don't know what's next, but he'll do something. They'll do two things in a row that don't go together. You ever seen a dog walking through a room and suddenly he stops and chews his back for 18 minutes? And then when he's finished chewing, as if it were scheduled for right then, of course. And when he's finished, he doesn't even know where it was he was gonna go. Where was I gonna go? Oh, shit. Oh, I think I'll go over here. Oh, this is nice over here. I think I'll keep coming over here. he give you that doggy look. Give you them eyes, you know, to have such a great expression. Almost human. Sometimes we say that, isn't he? Look, he looks almost human, Dan. They do, you know, they look like they know something about your mother. <laughs> They're not willing to mention it right away. They're just looking at you like they got a trig problem they can't quite solve. There's a, there's a sad look in their eyes. All the sadness in the world is right in the eyes of a dog. Did you ever do this? Look right into your doggy's eyes and think of something really sad. And it'll look like it's happening to your dog. Strangest thing. They look at you like that. You know why they have so successful a look? Because they got eyebrows. Dogs have eyebrows. Or at least little ridges that pass for eyebrows. They got little things that they can manipulate. Just like we do. Oh, please. Please, Daddy. One. More treat. <laughs> Cats can't look at you like that. Cats don't look at that. Cats look at you coldly as if they're testing new eyes. <laughs> Reason cats look different, cats don't have eyebrows. Cats have a bunch of shit sticking out of their head. <laughs> They thought it was going to be an eyebrow, but it didn't work out. Let's not tell them. They think it's an eyebrow. It's just a bunch of shit sticking out of their heads. Cats are cute. Cats are goddamn cute. Isn't he cute? Look at him. God, he's cute. He's a kitty cat. That's how cute they are. They needed two names. Kitty wasn't cute enough. Kitty cat. Isn't he cute? The kitty cat. Look at him. Isn't he cute? Let's drown him. He's a cute little goddamn kitty cat. Ain't he? Look. Stick him on the wall. See if he hangs up there. Whoa! Little goddamn kitty cat. They're so goddamn cute. Oh, they're wonderful. God love them. They're so physical. That's what's fun. They're so physical. They love to rub on you. They love to rub on you. If you've got a leg and a cat, you got a party. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I love his leg, oh boy. I'm rubbing on his leg. Oh boy, oh boy. If you got two legs, shit, Jubilee celebration time. Oh boy, two legs, hot shit, I can do the figure eight. They love to do the figure eight. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I love to rub on his leg. They'll rub against your leg even if you're not there yet. You might still be 50 feet down the hall. They see you coming. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, soon I'll be rubbing on his leg. Soon. They'll even walk sideways so they don't miss you. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. They love it. 
It's so physical. You don't have to pet a cat. You just put your hand over him and he'll do all the work, man. <laughs> you pet him? You ever pet a cat who's lying absolutely flat? And before you're halfway finished, his ass is way up in the air. <laughs> like you pressed the ass button or something. Isn't he a cute little... Holy shit! How did he do that? Then they jump on your chest and put their ass right in your face. <laughs> Here's my ass, Dad. Check this ass, huh? And while they're showing you their ass, they give you some of this stuff. I say, get them off of me. Jesus, I hate that. I don't even know what it is and I don't like it. Look like they're into some bad drug. There's one other quality cats have, which uh, I admire. Cats don't accept blame. They don't embarrass at all. Cat does something dumb, you never know it by looking at him. Dog knocks over a lamp, you can tell who did it just by looking at the dog. Not the cat. Cat doesn't accept any blame, cat moves along to the next activity. What's that? Not me. Fuck that. I'm a cat. I'm... <laughs> Something break? Ask the dog. <laughs> cat doesn't get embarrassed. You ever seen a cat race across a carpet and crash into a glass door? <laughs> I meant that. I meant that. I meant that. <laughs> That's exactly how I wanted that to look. Fucking meow. <laughs> Fucking meow. Fucking meow. That's what they say when they get behind the couch. Cat's too proud to let you see him suffer. But you look behind the couch and you'll find your cat recuperating from a domestic accident. They got little slings and walkers, you know. Tried to make the window from the lamp. If you use vitamins, most good vitamins don't have a trade name stamped on them. They're blank pills. They look like vitamins, but they're not marked. And if you go on the road and you take a lot of vitamins with you, enough for like two weeks, you might put them in another big vial, unmarked. And now you've got an unmarked vial with unmarked pills in it. And if you're going through some little place, maybe where the cops got a heart on that day, and he wants to give you a little trouble, a little heat. He can hold you for a while while they send these things down to the lab. <laughs> and off your vitamins go. And that's why I, I always travel with Flintstone vitamins. <laughs> so the words, as I say, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits, fart, turd, and twat. Now, motherfucker came off the list immediately. The first day, in fact, I had a call from an English language purist. Some guy had to, he had to talk, you know, he got on the phone. He tells me I have a duplicate on my list. I have a duplication. He says, motherfucker is a duplication of the word fuck, technically. Because fuck is the root form, motherfucker being derivative, therefore it constitutes duplication. And I said, hey, motherfucker, how did you get my phone number anyway? I said, look, man, it may be derivative, but you still can't say it. You still can't say motherfucker on TV, can you? He said, no, but you can't say fucky, fucking, fuckola, fuckaroonie, or fuckerino either. <laughs> well, I said, yeah, that would crowd up my list some often. <laughs> so I just struck that motherfucker away. <laughs> struck it from the list. Motherfucker was gone. Now the list was shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Does it sound like something's missing? Does it sound like an old friend is gone? <laughs> Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. Remember the old rhythm? Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. Now, shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, tits. It falls apart. It isn't going anywhere. And by now, cocksucker is the dominant word on the list. 
Previously, with motherfucker on the list, cocksucker was somewhat balanced out. They were the only multisyllabic words on the list. But now, cocksucker stands alone, shit piss fuck on cocksucker tits. <laughs> and who knows, maybe it doesn't belong either. After all, motherfucker turned out to be a ringer. Let's take a look at cocksucker. <laughs> See, if this one belongs, we'll divide the word cock and sucker from each other, those words. Sucker isn't dirty. Sucker, that's, it's suggestive as hell. <laughs> but it isn't dirty. And cock, that's not dirty all the time. That's one of those words that's only partly filthy. Cock, if you're talking about the animal, it's perfectly all right. They used to read that to us from the Bible in third grade. And we would laugh, man. <laughs> is in the Bible. Remember the first time you heard about a cock fight? What? No. <laughs> and even the word cocksucker itself has been twisted out of all of its original meaning. It's been distorted. For some reason now, cocksucker means bad man. It's a good woman. How did they do that? How did they do that? Well, tits is on the end of the list. Shit, piss, fucking, cocksucker, motherfucker, tits. And you know it doesn't belong on that list. I mean, it really doesn't belong in with that kind of heavyweight filth. Tits isn't dirty. Tits is cute name. Cute thing, cute idea. Great fun. Good name. Tits, hey, tits sounds like a friend. It sounds like a nickname, doesn't it? Hey, tits, come here, man. <laughs> Hey, Tits, I want you to meet Toots. Tits, this is Toots. Toots, Tits. Tits. Cute word. Nice word. I love a word that spells the same forwards and backwards like Tit. Don't you think it's so cute when a word is spelled the same forwards and backwards? I always wished my name was Otto. Just so I could walk backwards and yell my name, you know? Otto! 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 Well, I had strange dreams. But the word tit is on the list because you can't say it on television. You can't say tit. Imagine that. Can't say tits. You can say boobs. Boob is spelled the same forwards and backwards, too. <laughs> boobs is all right. You can't say tits, but you can say boobs. In fact, boobs is an answer now on Match Game. I had boobs, Gene. <laughs> boobs, $200. <laughs> tits, $200 fine, maybe. <laughs> You can't say tits, you can say teats. Teats is all right, providing you're on at five in the morning and a cow is your guest. <laughs> but you can't say jugs and you can't say knockers, you know. That's right, Danny, pull on the cow's knockers. <laughs> right, grab a knocker in each hand, that a boy. Now alternate knockers, good deal. Can't say that. Tits. Tits sounds like a snack, you know? Well, I know what you're thinking, but tits sounds almost, it sounds Nabisco to me. It sounds like Nabisco has, has reserved that name because tits sounds like a thing at a party. Pass the tits, would you be? Okay. <laughs> Say, those things are responding. <laughs> Shit is fucking toxic motherfucker tits. Fart, turd, and twat. Fart? Fart is like tit. It's one of those nut words that isn't that harmful. You know, it's just a cute kind of thing. Fart. Well, farts can be a little harmful. It depends. <laughs> depends on who's cooking. But fart. <laughs> fart? Fart is a cute... Hey, kids know farts are okay. Kids know farts are fun. <laughs> farts are shit without the mess. <laughs> Yeah, same funny sound, same vile smell, no fuss, no mush. <laughs> fart is an interesting word in this respect. Talking about television, fart is extremely interesting because dig this. You can't say fart on television, we know that. You can't say fart, and you can't say fuck either on television. However, you can refer to fucking you can talk about fucking. They do that all the time. Some of the times, the show you're watching, two people are probably fucking in the other room. <laughs> fucking is all right. Fucking is part of the plot. 
A lot of plots are based on fucking. Will they fuck? Should they fuck? Have they fucked? Did they fuck? Will they fuck again? Will they get sick from fucking? Are they fucking too much? Will they fuck each other's friends? Will they have a baby from fucking? Will they be sorry they fucked? Will they be glad they fucked? All fuck stories. Every honeymoon joke is a fuck joke. Have you ever noticed it? Otherwise, the people wouldn't be on their honeymoon in the joke. They'd be knights or they'd be sailors or something. They're on their honeymoon. There's got to be a fuck joke. Every little, every news, I'm sorry, every quiz master has stood there with his newlywed couple and said, and I understand you folks are on your honeymoon. <laughs> Lots of fucking going on here. <laughs> Lots of fucking over here. So they talk about fucking all they want. They just don't call it that. They don't call it what it is. They call it other things. They call it making love, which is fine. They call it going to bed with someone, having an affair, sleeping together. But they don't call it fucking. On the other hand, fart. Not only is fart a word you can't use on television, but they never even refer to them. <laughs> That's how bad farts are compared to fucking. They don't even refer to farts. There are no farts on television. You've never seen a reference to a fart? I've never seen a fart reference. No, wouldn't you think that by now one guy would have gone, hmm, hmm. Do you think by now that one guy on the Johnny Carson panel just once would have said, hey, Ed, move down, man. That was a Clydesdale fart, Ed. <laughs> Give me the lighter, will you, Johnny? Well. Geez, Ed, next time you're sick, you ought to see the nurse, you know? God, it's not the smell so much. It's the burning of my eyes! <laughs> well, might, we might live to see that, you never know. Remember when you were a kid? Maybe you're a little boy child like me, out on short pants, maybe sitting in church. Sitting on a wooden bench in church in the middle of the summer with short pants. <laughs> you got a fart, you know. And it's up to you. You got to work out a little maneuver that's called the one cheek sneak. <laughs> right in tune with the organ. That's why they call them pews, you know? <laughs> pews! 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 <laughs> Did you ever notice that your own farts smell okay? <laughs> Say, that's fairly decent. <laughs> I think I'll stay home today. Do some reading in the closet. <laughs> now, I mentioned the three extra words, fart, turd, and twat. Turd is another word you can't say on television, turd. But, you know, when you get right down to it, who wants to say it? I don't even care if I ever hear that one again. Twat, twat is on the list for the same reason. It doesn't mean anything else. You know, it only has that one meaning, twat's twat, and that's that. <laughs> It's not like prick. Prick is one of those part-time dirty words. Prick is all right. You can say prick on television. You can say, I pricked my finger. Just don't say you fingered your prick. That's... <laughs> now, the dog might just embarrass you if it gets the chance. Let's go out to the front of your house, out to the living room. And uh, you're there now with your doggies there, of course. And you have some friends in, some neighbors <laughs> over, sitting around the coffee table. And uh, chit-chat, you know, talking to each other. You brought your Pepsi down, but fuck them, let them get their own Doritos. <laughs> I'm not here to feed the neighborhood. <laughs> and everybody's sitting around, and the dog is licking his balls!
and nobody mentions it. Spectacular thing going on there. If I could reach, I'd never leave the house, man. Are you kidding me? They don't even mention it. They say things like, isn't he cute? He's taking a bath. He appears to be licking his balls to me, Marge. Yeah, he's been on that one spot for over an hour. That's a mighty selective bath. No, 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 nice doggy. No, no, nice doggy. No, 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 no. Nice doggy, no, no, no. Don't you know they have the cleanest mouth of any animal? I'm just going by where he's been, honey. <laughs> I am not a chemist. I don't have a nice day anymore. I don't bother much with that. I think I'm beyond that now. I think I've outgrown the nice day. I think I've had my share. Why should I be hogging all the really nice ones? Let somebody else have a few. Of course, everybody still wants me to have one. Everybody wants me to have a nice day. Have a nice day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wanna give me my fucking change, please? I'm triple park. Some of them are really insistent. I said have a nice day! All right, all right, God damn it, all right, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> That's the trouble with have a nice day. It puts all the pressure on you. <laughs> now you've got to go out and somehow manage to have a good time. All because of some loose-lipped cashier. <laughs> have a nice day. Maybe I don't feel like having a nice day. Maybe, just maybe, I've had 116 nice days in a row. And I'm ready, by God, for a crappy day. I'll never hear that. Let him wish one of them. Hey, have a crappy day. Thank you, and to your wonderful family as well. Crappy day? Hey, that'd be easy. It's no trouble at all. A crappy day? Just get up. There's no planning involved for a crappy day. I know what it is that bothers me about that whole thing. It's the word nice. It's just a weak word. Doesn't have a lot of character, you know. Nice. Isn't he nice? Oh, he is so nice. And she's nice, too. Isn't that nice? How nice they are. I don't care for that, you know. It's like fine. There's another word. How are you? Fine. Bullshit! <laughs> Nobody's fine. Hair is fine. How's your hair? Fine. That makes a lot more sense to me. Some guys are great. You ever meet those guys? Great! Isn't this great? God damn, this is great! Look, they're gonna kill that guy! Isn't that great? That's great! No, not me. I'm not nice. I'm not fine. I'm not great. People ask me how I am. I say I'm fairly decent. I don't give them any superlatives, nothing to gossip about. Relatively okay. Sometimes I'll say, I'm moderately neato. If I'm in a particularly jaunty mood, I'll say, I'm not unwell, thank you. That pisses them off because they have to figure that one out for themselves. <laughs> so. It reminds me of something my first grade teacher used to say to me. A little lady. She used to say, you show me a tropical fruit and I'll show you a cocksucker from Guatemala. No, that, that was someone else. That was someone else. 
Sometimes I go like this. But then I stop. This has been one of those times. This, uh, this next piece of material is uh, on a subject that most people can identify with. It's about losing things. You know, I don't like to lose anything. I don't like to lose anything. Because where is it? <laughs> See, basically, that's the part that bothers me the most. I'm a practical guy. Where is it? <laughs> I just had it. You know that feeling? It was just here. Where is it? I don't know. It's gone. That's true. It's lost. I know. Where could it be? Could be anywhere. Maybe it'll come back. Maybe, but not yet. It's gone. That's true. Are we going to go through this shit again? Where do these things go when they're lost? There are some things I don't even care if I ever get them back. I just want to know where the fuck they went. And losing things is one of those things in life that's even worse when you're a child. Much worse to lose something when you're a child because people get on you for it. You know, it's double jeopardy. Not only is the item gone, but you're catching shit from up here. You what? I lost my yo-yo. Well, where did you have it last? Hey, if I knew that, I would still have my yo-yo. Well, it must be somewhere right. Well, it just didn't get up and walk away. That one always got to me. It just didn't get up and walk away. One time I lost the cat. It just got up and walked away. And she actually started to say it. Well, it just didn't get up and... Hey, Ma, I think you figured this one out. Where do things go when they're lost? You know what I think? I think there's a big pile of things somewhere. I think there's a big constantly changing pile of things that are lost. You lose something, and it goes to the pile. Then you say, oh, look, there it is. Right back from the pile. And you didn't even know there was a pile. And where is the pile? In heaven, of course has to be in heaven. That's the first thing that happens when you get to heaven. They give you back everything you ever lost. That's the whole meaning of heaven. You get back everything. Here you are, 79 pairs of sunglasses, 212 cigarette lighters, 4,983 ballpoint pens. And here's a jock strap we found on the Golden State Freeway. It appears to have mule hoof prints and chocolate sprinkles on it. Must have been quite an evening. Yes, you get back everything. You get back ev well, not everything. You don't get the big things back. Good judgment, that never comes back. Your tonsils, your appendix, they keep those for display purposes. Virginity, you don't get that back because you were in such a big hurry to get rid of it in the first place. But you do get all your wallets. You get back every wallet you ever lost. No cash. It's just like Earth. <laughs> right. They keep the money as a prayer offering. Speaking of heaven, you know what else they have in heaven? They've got a special room for every balloon that ever got away. Yeah, next time you see a balloon drifting off by itself, relax. Soon it will be with its friends in the balloon room off the main hall in West Heaven. And that makes me happy. You know why? Because I'm a balloon guy. I am. I don't mind admitting it right in public. I'm a balloon guy. I love a balloon. You know what I say? I say, give me a balloon. Sometimes I say it loud. Give me a balloon! Most people don't pay any attention to me. Let's get back to losing things. Have you noticed some people, when they lose something, the first thing they say is it was stolen? That's their first reaction. Who stole it? It's an ego defense. They can't stand the fact that they might have been stupid enough to have lost something. Had to have been stolen. Even if it's something that nobody would really want. Hey! Hey! Who stole my collection of used bandages? 
And they also got away with my nude pictures of Ernest Borgnine. <laughs> Do you ever notice this when you've lost something? That the longer you look for it, the stranger the places get that you're looking? <laughs> you look at the strangest goddamn places after a while. You have to. Why? You've already looked in the easy places. Those are the first places we look, the obvious places. People say to each other, well, I've looked everywhere. Well, apparently not. Goddamn thing is still gone, isn't it? Let's keep looking in obvious places. I'll look in the furnace, you check the cesspool. You look in the strangest places. Did you ever look in the freezer for your car keys? You have to, why? They might be in there. You wouldn't want to pass up a nice obvious place like a freezer, would you? You can picture them in there. That's, you can see them in there. That's what the mind is for, picturing where you left your car keys. You can believe anything. You can follow the logic all the way back to the supermarket. I came out of the supermarket. I had the frozen banana guacamole in my hands. I drove home, got out of the car with the banana guacamole in my hand. I had my keys in this hand. I put the banana guacamole in the freezer. I probably just dropped the keys in there too. Let's go take a look. Oh shit, they're not in there. I could have sworn I left those keys in the freezer. And hey, who stole the banana guacamole? <laughs> you look in the strangest goddamn places. Do you ever find yourself looking in a suit you haven't worn in 10 years for something you just had 20 minutes ago? You have to. Why? Six more pockets wouldn't want to pass them up, would you? Or else you wouldn't be able to say, I've looked everywhere. By the way, while you're in the closet, check the watch pocket of your grandfather's World War I uniform. You just might have handed him the keys before the Battle of Verdun. Here's another thing happens when you're looking for something. Did you ever notice that you'll be looking for something, you might be out in the garage, and every now and then you'll go back and look where the thing ought to be? You'll go right from the garage, you'll walk back and look in the top drawer. Nope, not back yet. <laughs> you're convinced that St. Anthony will bring those keys back while you're in the goddamn garage. And of course, if you're looking for car keys, your pocket is one place where you have to look at least six or seven hundred times. <laughs> You wear out the cloth in your pocket. Oh, jeez, I had them. They were right here, you know. And I usually, usually I'll put them in here. See, I get out of the car. I have them. Hold on. See, now then, hold on. No, usually, see, now hold on. Wait a minute. Wait. No, no. But maybe I'd sneak up on them. No, they're not in there. I don't know what the hell I did with them. I had them, you know. Hold on. I had What? What? Maybe they fell upwards. Maybe they fell upwards and stuck to some bubble gum. Hold on. Maybe for the first time in my life, I dropped them down near my balls. No, 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 no. Well, your imagination runs away with you. Well, those are easy things. Car keys, those are common. Sometimes it's an unusual item that's missing, like the couch. <laughs> Did you ever come home and the goddamn couch is gone? Where's the couch? I don't know. It's gone, that's true. Where could it be? Could be anywhere. Maybe it'll come back, maybe, but no, not this, too big. <laughs> Nothing over six feet ever comes back on its own. Well, it was here this morning. Well, of course it was here this morning. There'd be no sense in mentioning the fact that it isn't here now unless it had been here this morning. Fuck you, I'm tired of your shit. Why don't you take your logic and go to bed? I can't. Why not? I sleep on the couch. Did you ever at home, when you go to make a sandwich, do you reach down past the first two or three pieces of bread <laughs> to get the good bread? It's sort of a survival thing, a self, you know, it's sort of like, a, let my family have the rotten bread. <laughs> I'll take care of numero uno. <laughs> and down we go into the healthy part of the loaf. <laughs> Sometimes you're going down into the loaf, not so much because of uh, freshness or mold, but because of the size of the piece of bread you want. As we all know, the fat slices are somewhere near the middle. And down you go, and you have to go past about eight or nine slices till you get what you want, and then you hope they don't rip on the way up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just before you get them out, the top eight slices go boom and fall the other way. Oh, shit, I just leave them crooked, don't you? Yeah. Let them think a burglar made a sandwich, you know. Not me, honey, I didn't do that. I never do that. That's like, who the fuck is it in my house who puts away the milk carton with this much milk in it, man? Who the fuck put that away? 
I thought that was full. <laughs> now then, the other word I wanted to remind you of was the word fuck, which of course is the champ of the all-time dirty words, when they're always dirty by God, fuck is right at the head of the pack. <laughs> Fuck's a good, strong word. It's a good, strong word for its purpose, and it's a, it's a word that a lot of people have trouble with. Uh, it's, a, it's an honest word. It's a, it's a forceful word. It has a lot of emotional baggage with it. When you hear the word fuck, you're not just hearing the word. You're hearing everything you ever heard about fucking. I mean, we have a lot of attitudes about fucking. Some of them are rational and some of them aren't. Some of them have joy in them. Some have guilt and fear and all sorts of things. And the word fuck carries with it a lot of emotional baggage. When they say fuck, you go, what? what? Oh, oh, good. Oh, I thought you meant do it right away. <laughs> God, you know, it's, uh, it's just a word that, that, well, it'll clear the room awfully quick in some households. It's a heavy, good, strong word. It's a proud-sounding word to me. Fuck, fuck, I am fuck. Who are you? <laughs> fuck of the mountain. I just, uh, I just feel the word is getting a bad shake. The word has an image problem. The word fuck needs public relations help. It's just a word. You know, that's what you have to remember. It's just a word, but it's in such bad shape. Here's a word that started out okay started out all right nothing wrong with the word fuck originally i mean there it was you're not a bad word you're not a bad word you've just gotten in with bad company people that's all just the word was all it was the word in the original old english as best i can find fuck only meant to hit to smite to s to perhaps hit with a stick to fuck the tree to fuck the rock. To fuck thee. That's all. And pretty soon. That's all. I'll hit you with my dick, honey. Look at that. That's all it was. Just a little. I'll knock a little fuck on you there. That's all it was. It was a love tap when you get right down to it. That's all fuck ever meant. All fuck ever meant was to make love. And to make life at the same time. That's pretty magic. I mean, the pretty noble things we think about, making love and making life. Here was fuck hanging around with words like love and life. How did it get such a bad reputation? We fucked it up. <laughs> yeah, well, we... We put the aggression back into the word. Fuck you! Fuck you, you fuck! Fuck you, you fuck! Who the fuck do you think you're fucking with? Some kind of a fuckhead? Fuck you! Who the fuck do you think you're fucking with? Me? Don't fuck with me, I'll fuck over you. You fuck with me and you'll get fucked, you fuck. Don't fuck with me, I'm the fucker. Don't fuck with the fucker. God, it sounds like combat, man. It's got an awful lot, of, there's an awful lot of hostility in the way that word is used. There's an awful lot of aggression going down in the name of fucking. Imagine that. The word, make love, not war. Someone pointed it out finally. They made it very clear for us. Make love, not war. I wish I had thought of that phrase, you know? I really would have been very happy with myself if I had thought of that one. Man, I would have retired the same day. I would have left my car at the red light, man. I say, that's it, folks. I'm going to the beach. You got it. Make love, not war. Well, I didn't think of it. But I do have my own phrase. Make fuck, not kill. It's not as graceful a phrase. But I'm not looking to retire either. It's fuck. The whole idea of make fuck, not kill, is simply to switch the meanings of the words. I suggest that for one year, we trade meanings on fuck and kill. Just fuck for kill and kill for fuck, that's it. Don't worry about what they really are. Someone else will take care of real fucking and real killing. I'm just worried about what we call it, or them. We call them fucking and killing. I say switch them around. I think it would be an insight. I think we'd get a new slant on how we feel about these words if we just changed fucking for killing for about a year, that's all. Imagine it. Sure would be fun watching TV during that time, huh? <laughs> Better get down off the horse, Sheriff. We're fixing to fuck you now. <laughs> Mad fucker still on the loose. 
Not anymore. He's made his first big mistake, my friend. He fucked a cop today. <laughs> that makes him a cop fucker. <laughs> Pardon me, boys. My horse broke his leg. I'm going to have to fuck him. I'll be right there. <laughs> Shamu, the fucker whale. <laughs> oh. And to fuck a mockingbird, <laughs> hold gently by the wing. So all I'm trying to suggest is that fuck you can be a positive phrase. If you hear it from across the street, fuck you, okay. Walking, just plain old walking, is a source of a lot of experience we'd recognize. It just, I mean, of course, you know, we walk pretty well. Humans got it down pretty good, wouldn't you say? Hello there. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Look at this, still walking. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about walking erect, right? Yeah, homo erectus or whatever he was. This dude, because I mean, uh, it's one of the few things that separates us from the lower, lower animals, walking and hats, right? <laughs> Rarely see a lower animal with a hat, and if, if he does, chances are a man put it on him, you know? But uh, there are some animals that walk erect for short bursts. You've seen them, you know. <laughs> That's not it, and we know it, man. This is fucking walking. We know what walking is. We have a right to be proud. Being able to walk like that. And a right to be embarrassed when it doesn't work. When we walk dopey. Sometimes you do something dumb, you know? Sometimes it's not your fault, but you always blame it on something else. Just a little misstep. Blame it on the sidewalk. Can't be me. I'm graceful. You've seen it. <laughs> Got me fucking boulder in the road. Might be the shoes, they're not mine. I borrowed them. Not used to the soles. Goodbye. Couldn't be me. That's why I like with a limp, you know. Limp, some people go, ooh, but that's not right. Guy with limps don't do that. Plus, he just got the limp. But you've seen some guys. Some guys are good, man. Some guys are really into their limp. They've had it a long time, man. It's like years. And you've seen guys like that, man. They, you, shit, they pivot on it. Shoom. Hey, you know. You've seen those guys. A lot of guys. They go up a, you see them go up a spiral staircase. <laughs> Did you see that shit? Yeah, they screw something. Guys can handle it when you've had a limp a long time. It's when you just get a limp, when it's a new limp, that you're not good at it yet. And you go, Ah! 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 Look at this! Steal me, my leg! That's when you're not too cool. Did you ever walk and count your footsteps? You know how many of them fall in each box on the sidewalk? <laughs> one, two, one, two, one, two and a half. Carry a half. One, two and a half. <laughs> Hate doing math while I'm walking. Did you ever look at yourself in store windows? <laughs> Gotta check it out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to see your profile? Never see it. Sometimes you're walking up the stairs and you think there's another stair. <laughs> You have to go into a little routine, you know. <laughs> Throw them off. Hi there, hi. Good thing stereo's on mezzanine. Sometimes you're going down the stairs. And you think, there's another one. <laughs> I was what they called a fussy eater. He's fussy. He's a fussy eater. Fussy eater is a euphemism for big pain in the ass. 
I mean, if I didn't like something, I told them. I didn't play with my food, pick at my food. I said, I don't like that. You make this? I don't like it. Why? They wanted reasons. Well, you don't always have a reason. I don't know. I know I don't like it. And I know that if I ate it, I would like it even less. You like it? You eat it. Then, then they would try to corner me with logic. How do you know you don't like it? If you've never even tried. It came to me in a dream. Some things don't look right. I don't like that, Ma. Don't look right to me. Did you make that? Is there a picture of it in the cookbook? I bet it don't look like that. Let's face it, be honest, some things don't look right. Of course, some people eat anything. I know that. Some guys eat anything. I saw those guys in the army on the chow line. What's this? Never mind. Give me a whole lot of it. That's rat's asshole, Don. <laughs> well, it certainly makes a hell of a fondue. <laughs> don't look. I don't eat anything I don't recognize immediately. If I have to ask questions, fuck it. I pass. You know? <laughs> Tomatoes don't look right either. On the outside, they're fine. Tomatoes look lovely on the outside, but you look inside a tomato and something is wrong. Something has gone afoul inside of a tomato. It doesn't look right, you know? It doesn't look like it's finished yet, for one thing. It looks like it's in the larval stage or something. There's thousands of seeds and a whole bunch of jelly-looking stuff. Uh, 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 get it off my plate. Uh, Squishy. It's like that stuff at the end of an egg. And I know it's not the end of an egg, it's the beginning of a chicken. It's hen cum. We go to play Monopoly in groups of uh, four, five, six, huh? I guess. Monopoly. I still play now and then. I think. You never leave that completely. You know, if they need an extra guy, you know, I don't start him up. <laughs> Come on, we need... Okay, put me in up. Because I was never very good at it, you know. I didn't uh, do very well. I, well, I, I have a couple of railroads, you know. <laughs> Not a complete asshole. <laughs> I have a couple of railroads, snap up Baltic Avenue as soon as that became available. <laughs> How much is that? Sixty? Let me have that, mother. <laughs> but the best thing I'd ever have would be, oh, maybe one piece of property in the light blue series. <laughs> Oriental Avenue, nothing on it, of course. Maybe an excavation. That's about all I ever had on my stuff was plans. Surveyor's mark. All my friends had industrial parks, condominiums, shopping centers, malls. Oh boy, Colin, you're coming down my side now, man. Wow. Big one. <laughs> Hot shit, a 12. Of course, you can't move your token till you remember which one you had. <laughs> which token did I have? Which did I have? You push it. You had the pivot. You got the race. You got the red. You got the bar. I got the ship. I got the battleship every game. <sighs> the worst token to have was the gun, the big cannon. It was the only token that kept falling over, you know? <laughs> it was the only top heavy. Throw the dice anywhere near that one. <clears throat> Who are you? Are you the gun? Are you the gun? Pick it up, would you please? And you, are you in jail or just visiting? Okay, well put the car on the outside if you're just visiting. Some guys cared. That's right. 
That's why they won. <laughs> I never won. I was always in there at the end, though, at the end of the game, because I'd have all the one dollar bills, man. <laughs> sure, 1,500 in singles, and they needed me to make change, man. <laughs> For all their filthy deals. No, I wasn't that good at the game. I, uh, generally, I used to... I would land on chance all the time. Constantly landing on chance. Try to buy it. <laughs> You're getting more fights trying to buy a chance. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Chance. <laughs> Little man with a hat. $200 for being an asshole. Shuffle them good. That's the second time I got that one. There's a lot of shit you have to put up with when you're driving. Like red lights. When did this bullshit start? I only noticed them about a month ago myself. And I'll be honest with you, I don't stop for them anymore. I did for about a week. Didn't like it. Fuck them. I'm gone. I got no time to sit there jacking around listening to the news. You know my motto in traffic? Cop didn't see it, I didn't do it. I'm gone! No. Hey! I haven't hit anybody yet. Haven't hit anybody? I've had a few people behind me hit each other, but hey. That's not me, that's back there. Me, I'm gone! And I'm getting a whole lot better mileage. <laughs> Especially in town. God damn, them sidewalks come in handy, don't they? <laughs> well, what are they going to do if they catch me? Give me a ticket? You know, that's the big fear in some people's lives. Ain't this a bitch? Might get a ticket. You know how to handle a ticket by now, don't you? You got to be firm with the policeman. Be firm with that policeman. Policemen respect strength. While he's writing out the ticket, you got to flash him a whole lot of bad looks. <laughs> then when he's almost finished writing, Reach over and grab the ticket out of his hand. Tell him you're going to check it over for mistakes. <laughs> then when you finish reading it, crumple it up and throw it at his feet. And say, fuck you and your ticket too. <laughs> you asshole in a hat. Can't you see I have enough garbage on the floor of my car already? Without another worthless piece of paper from the state? I got eight or nine of them fucking things floating around in here. Hey. Don't I pay your salary? They like that when you're interested in the state budget. You're a public servant. Get me a glass of water. You pinheaded prick! You're holding me up, Jack! People are waiting for me at a party! I got a trunk full of heroin! Get the fuck out of my way, will ya? Tell them it's your car! Tell them it's your car and you do what you goddamn want with it! See, I own this car! My name is on the pink slip! I do what I want and I own the highway too! That my taxes paid for that! They're both mine! I own the highway and I own the car! I own everything, goddammit! He'll be glad to hear that shit! That's what they like, people who know their rights. That way they don't have to read them to you on the way downtown to the maximum security penitentiary where you'll spend the rest of your life with no conjugal visits. Except from some big guy you don't want one from. Well, I get pissed, goddammit! There's a lot of shit you have to put up with when you're driving. Like these jogger assholes. I've killed three of the motherfuckers myself. Three. 
I have killed three jogger assholes. Out. I'd have more, I'd have a few more, but I don't always kill them. Sometimes I just toy with them, you know? I pull up in my car and with my right front tire, I pull the sneaker off their heel. Of course, he can't hear me coming because he has on his Walkman. I'm wearing my Walkman today. I'm cutting the world out. Bullshit, you are, asshole. They think they're gonna live longer by jogging. Not if they get near my fucking machine, they're not. You're going away! It's Michelin on Nike time! I don't know which is worse, the jogger assholes or the bicycle riding creeps. These faggots on their bicycles. And they got special little hats, you know, they have special little hats to protect their special little heads. And they all try to act grown up. These bicycle people try to act mature because they know basically they're dealing with a toy. So they try to act grown up by giving hand signals. That makes them feel adult. They give hand signals. He's going to tell me where he's going. I'll tell you where you're going. You're going 30 feet up in the fucking air is where you're going! <laughs> Back on the sidewalk with the rest of the children. Does your mother tell you to keep your toys in the yard? Well, I get pissed, goddamn it! There's a lot of shit you have to put up with when you're driving. Like the other cars. Have you noticed that hazard? Oh. Thousands of these other cars, many of them with people who have licenses, apparently. And they get you so fucking pissed off. Some of these people in their cars, they get you so fucking pissed off. You get so fucking pissed off, you know what I mean? Do you ever get so fucking pissed off that you forgot where you're going? Because you got behind someone who isn't going anywhere either. A man with no destination at all. And I say, step on all the pedals, maybe one of them means go! <laughs> oh, they get you pissed. I don't know where they come from, but I believe, I believe there's an automotive harassment squad that is notified when I leave the house. All right, he's leaving now. Everyone in position. And they're laying for me all along my route. Here's a guy making a U-turn in reverse. Here's a woman backing out of a bush. <laughs> and each of them has a special talent. Each driver has one thing he does for you. First of all, there's the guy whose turn signal has been on since 1955. <laughs> then there's his opposite. That's the guy who doesn't put his turn signal on until he's finished the turn. He's gonna tell you where he was. Then there's the guy behind you at night whose brights are on. He has his brights on in case you want to read. Well, I just happen to have a copy of Ivanhoe with me. Oh, don't they get you pissed? Don't they get you so goddamn mad sometimes when you're out there? Some of them especially. Here's one you know. Here's a feeling you'll recognize immediately. You ever been behind somebody on like a two-lane road or something? Somebody you cannot get around? You've been behind him already for like 18 minutes? And you want to get somewhere and he's not moving at all? And did you ever get so pissed off that all you want to do now is catch up with him to see what the fuck he looks like? You know that feeling? See, I just want to see this cocksucker's face. Look, he looks exactly like I thought he would! Constipated! Cars to watch out for. First car is any car where the driver is also on the phone. Technology has brought us these self-important twits. You know, phones were invisible, these guys wouldn't own them. The whole idea is for you to see the phone so you'll know he's a busy guy. I'm a busy guy. He's reaching out, that's what he'd tell you. I am reaching out. Well, reach out and jerk me off! <laughs> then 
Then there's these people who want you to go ahead of them, this courtesy bullshit that's going around. See, I don't think it's real courtesy. That's why I don't like it. It's a bogus, it's a, it's a counterfeit generosity. Everybody wants me to go first. You, go, go ahead, please. Go, go. Even when I leave the house in the morning, there's a guy there at 7 a.m. waiting for me. I'm waiting for you to come out so you can go first. Go ahead, go. I think it's a post-Vietnam guilt syndrome of some kind. You know, it, America has lost its soul, so now it's going to save its body. It's like the fitness craze in this country. Well, it doesn't work that way, you know what I mean? doesn't work that way and I'm sitting in the driveway I know I'm sitting there I'm stuck it looks like I'm stuck but I'm not asking for any help I'm not asking for anything just sitting there and some yo-yo some putts some some world-class high-tech state-of-the-art yo-yo who hasn't had a generous thought since St. Swithin's day slams on his brakes <laughs> kills three people behind him and doesn't ask me to go tells me to go you go Fuck you! You go! I like it here! I come here all the time! You go! And then when he goes, crash into him! And if he gets out to complain, say, hey, you said to go! Thank you all very much! Have a good time. Good night, Kelly! Good night, Kelly! See you all later. Thank you. Appreciate it.